Hi. Today I'd like to taste with you Chateau Lanassin, a wine from the Omedoc in Bordeaux. Uh, this is a 2015 vintage of this. Um, and we'll touch on the, the story of how an administrative oversight many years ago has left us uh, with a great value wine from the Medoc. Um, but first of all, to talk about where the Chateau Lanassin is located. Um, we're in the Omedoc, so the, the best part of the Medoc, but in, in the, the what's referred to sometimes as the central Medoc. So it's you're between Margot to the south and um, Saint-Julien to the north. Um, and in fact, Lanassin is to the north of Saint-Julien. Um, so if you come heading north out of the village of Cusack Fort Medoc, um, along the D2, it's on the left, on the landward side, just before you reach Chateau Becheville in front of you and a curve and a slight rise in the ground there. So Lannesan's nearest neighbour is Gruet Rose. There's just a, a, a canal and a small area of woodland separate the two. And in fact, um, Lannesan's terroir, its soils, are, are quite comparable to those of Gruet de Rose. They're, they're deep uh, medoc gravel. Um, and uh, other neighbours nearby on the other side of the road um, include two fourth growths, uh, Chateau Saint Pierre, owned by the Henri Martin Group, um, and um, Chateau Becheville. So, a, a great place to be growing grapes. Um, and I mean, Lanassan has the reputation for being one of the um, most consistent and highest quality wines in that central Medoc region. Um, it has great history as well. Uh, there's, there's records of a property here back to the early 1300s. Um, the um, Boutier family, who, who currently own it, trace ownership through branches of their family back through the, the, the Delbo family. Um, it changed hands through, through marriage. Um, eight generations to the um, late 18th century. So it's, it's had stable ownership. Um, However, it was um, Louis Delbo in 1855 who was um, invited to, he, he was running the chateau, he was invited to submit samples to a tasting um, to um, classify the great growths of the Medoc um, for uh, an exhibition that the emperor was putting on in Paris and one of the sort of sub-locations they, they wanted a, a display of France's great wines. So for this, the uh, Negotiants were doing a classification, um, but uh, Louis Delbo decided that that the um, this was bureaucratic nonsense, so he didn't send any samples. Um, unfortunately, the classification system of, of 1855 has held good since then, and and the wines of the Medoc are, are ranked first, second, third, fourth, fifth growth against this. And most commentators think that Lanassan would probably have have ranked at least fourth growth in that had. Delbo decided to, to send samples, so uh, possibly his um, uh, family have regretted that decision subsequently. Um, but for us, this gives us a wine that's um, potentially, you know, very well located, potentially a, a, a fabulous wine at a, at a great price. Um, and to be fair, the, the average price for this vintage, relatively mature vintage of a quite decent claret. Um, worldwide is about um, 26 US dollars ex tax. Um, do follow, there'll be a link below this video um, to the Wine Searcher website where you can see up to date pricings, which is why I'm not trying to be too accurate with that sort of thing. But um, so you have a, a winery that, that has some fabulous vineyards. They've got about 32 hectares of vines with an average age of 30 years. So good vine age giving lovely concentrated fruit. Um, 2015 was the year when they first employed um, Hubert de Buard as a wine consultant. So de Buard, um, the owner and um, a winemaker at uh, Chateau Angelus in saint Emilion, so a top name to make the wine. Um, the wine, this particular wine um, is a blend of principally Cabernet Sauvignon, 58%, with 35% of Merlot. And actually because it's a because 15 was quite a hot year, there's 7% of Petit Verdot in here, which is quite an unusually high proportion um, for Petit Verdot because it, it doesn't always, or hasn't historically, always ripened particularly well. The wine um, is fermented in temperature regulated um, concrete tanks. It um, goes into oak to age for about a year. 
um, and that oak is one third new, one third second fill, one third third fill. Um, so really quite a, a standard means of production for a wine of this um, style and quality from the Medoc. So let's, let's have a look at the wine, shall we? We've got a, a relatively deeply coloured, though not opaque. I can see the stem of the glass through, through the, the um, um, looking down through the wine there. Swelling it, I'm not particularly seeing enormous tears on this. What are the aromas like? The aromas are juicy and lifted, but there's a delicacy to them. Maybe a slight leafiness, touch of red, red fruit and dark plum. Um, I'm not really getting a, a, as you'd, you'd expect from uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, you'd often expect a sort of a really black currenty note, but it's more actually sort of black cherry. This is quite the. 15 was quite a ripe vintage, so that's, that's possible. We are starting to see some stained tears starting to flow down the, the, the glass now. So, so let's have a taste, shall we? The, the wine is mid-weight and it's got a, a good freshness to it. It's also got quite gripping tannins, which almost close it down towards the beginning there, but then, then the fruit reasserts itself over the top. It's quite juicy. I'm just thinking black cherries here. Maybe there's a licorice -y core here. There are perhaps some notes of cassis starting to come through as the freshness asserts itself as well. There's slight leafy touches, but only just um, maybe dark plum as well, but it's, it's that sort of um, licorice -y core. The alcohol seems to be adding a little bit of warmth. I mean, the, the, uh, it's only labelled as 13.5%, so it's not particularly high, and that's not giving a lot of weight in the mouth. It's, it, this is medium bodied and structured, um, but that dry, grainy structure is being overpowered by quite a sort of a a chocolatey textured rich dark fruit at the back and I suspect that that's the uh, the Petit Verdot element which can can come through quite strongly even with just a small amount um, you know seven percent in the blend is, is is not an enormous amount but it can it can be quite um, forward in its in its um, uh, in its flavors there um, the freshness of the wine is is pretty good the length is pretty good this is no, this is a well-made um, claret of reasonable quality. What I didn't actually say, sorry, I should should have mentioned earlier, was the, the, the fact that actually this is machine-picked, which is unusual for a classe level um, claret. Um, but given the costs involved, it seems reasonable. But to, to compensate for the fact that machine-picking is less selective, all the fruit goes through an optical sorter on this. So... Um, you know, there's a there's a quality compromise there, but I think it's a nicely made claret in a in a good style and well worth at that price having having a go and seeing what you think because um, you know it has the um, structure and the um, outline of a really nice wine there. Um, it should age for you know, five to ten years quite happily. Uh, the um, notes we have for a drinking window suggests that this should be fine till 2040. I think that's that might be expecting a little much of it, but the wine has, has good structure and, and good acidity, so it might, might age for that, for that one. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting, and do join us again. Bye now.